Okay, welcome back everybody um, to our second um, session here on uh, the end times, BC213. I see a question in the chat from Nina. Verse 9 of chapter 24, talk, is, is it talking about believers? Who will be delivered and killed? Uh, many offended, betrayed one another. So, verse 9. And, and then they will deliver you up to tribulation, kill you, be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and hate one another. Okay. So the interesting thing I want to want to point out is this. In verse 9 and 10, he's talking about all nations hating people in the name of Jesus. Then in this passage in between 15 to 31, he's talking very specifically about Judea, Jerusalem, and the elect. So there's a change in subject. Okay. In verse 9 and 10, he's talking about all believers around the world, believers, Gentile believers, Jewish believers, everyone. But in this passage, 15 to 31, he's very specifically talking about Jude Judea. That means, so you will find as we, even when we go through the book of Revelation and based on Daniel's prophecy, the 70th week is very specifically about Jerusalem and the people of Israel. So the tribulation, meaning the seven years of tribulation, especially the second half, which is referred to as a great tribulation. The seven years of tribulation, is, which is Daniel 73, is very specifically, the focus is specifically on the Jews and Israel. Of course, things will be happening all over the world. Judgments will be poured, being poured out all over the world. But the prophecies that have been given to us are very specific, most of them, not saying all of them, uh, but most of them very specific to the people, the Jewish people. Right? So uh, anyway, Nina, to answer your question, verses 9 and 10 are referring to believers all over the world. And when we get into chapter between 15 and 31, you will find that he's talking about those who are in Judea, verse 16. Um, those who are on the housetop, you know, don't come down. That's very specific to those who are in Jerusalem, in Israel at that time. Uh, and because we will see in Revelation 12 that Satan goes out with great vengeance against Israel. Revelation chapter 12 on the focus attack. Israel will face intense attack at that time. Now, those who believe in Jesus uh, at that time. Uh, in Jerusalem, there will be great suffering. And we see that in Revelation 12 and 13 on. Okay. You have a question, Prince? Uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, adding on to this, like, uh, in verse 9, like we know that this is before tribulation, right? This is before the 7, like yes. from verse 1 to 9. But then what does it mean? Like they will deliver you to tribulation in verse 9. Yeah, they will deliver up to tribulation. I mean that they will, this word, this word tribulation, is not referring to. So the word tribulation is used, like Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation. Right. So it's not referring to tribulation as in the seven-year period we're talking about, but tribulation as in hardship, difficulty, so on, so forth. Yeah, so they will deliver you up to, to trouble to be mistreated treated harshly to kill you to hate it by be hated by all nations so that's you know so the same word is used but uh, we understand when he's talking about tribulation as in trials hardships difficulties versus tribulation as in the seven years of tribulation or the great tribulation which would be the last three and a half years Um, end of verse, um, you're talking about um, uh, verse. and then the uh, this gospel will be uh, preached in all the nations as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come, which is the beginning of the seven years of tribulation. Okay, so I said, then the end will come. 
is it's like this is the last seven years. No, no, four to fourteen is just before the start of the tribulation, seven years. Fifteen to thirty-one is the seven years, but the focus is like on certain things, like the Antichrist uh, and uh, the lot of false prophets coming, and then the end of the tribulation when Christ Himself comes, the Son of Man comes. So He's just giving us a few things, not telling us all the details, but. Revelation will give us all the details, right? Revelation chapter 6 onwards till the end. It gives full details of the seven years of tribulation. Yeah. So let's now we're highlighting things in this passage. So 15 to 31, right? So Jesus is referring to the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel. So Again, here, I, will, I just want to highlight you know, how Jesus himself recognizes that the book of Daniel was written by the, or spoken by the prophet Daniel. You know? Now, um, I, uh, when we study Daniel in, in, in the third year, that's important because there are many people who criticize, who, let's say, are skeptical. They doubt the book of Daniel because the book of Daniel has such amazing prophecies. And so how can any man give such detailed prophecy? So they will say, no, 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 no. This book was written after everything happened, they wrote it. But no, Daniel said it before it happened. And Jesus is saying here, this was spoken by Daniel the prophet. It wasn't written by somebody in the first century who then re re recorded history. No, 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 no. Daniel wrote, said it even before those things happened. Because Jesus is saying, it was spoken by the prophet Daniel. Okay, let's just uh, want to highlight that. The other thing that we're seeing in this passage is, now Jesus is saying, verse 16, those who are in Judea flee to the... So now he is very specifically talking about Jerusalem, Judea, Israel, what is in the land. Those who are here, you be careful. Okay, before he was saying all nations, verse 9, they be, you'll be hated by all nations. And this is the thing. Now he's very specific. If you're here in Jerusalem, hey, you better be careful. Because things are going to be very difficult in Israel. Very difficult. And this is exactly what Daniel prophesied and what John also prophesied when we go through Revelation. He, saw, he says, Satan is going out with full vengeance against the woman. The woman is Israel, who gave birth to the man-child, that is Jesus. So he's, the second half of the tribulation, three and a half years, Revelation 12 on, Satan is going with full vengeance against Israel, because he knows this, this is his last chance. Right? So... If you're in Israel, they're living there, he says, if you're in Judea, this is going to be very difficult. It is going to be so difficult, Jesus saying, don't even come from rooftop to down. You know, verse 17, if you're on the housetop, don't even go down. If you're in the field, don't even go back to the house. Meaning your life is so risk, so much risk. In those days, during the Great Tribulation, it's going to be so bad. Even just going within your house, something can happen. Right? And he says, you know, giving birth is going to be so difficult. And uh, verse 20, pray that you don't have to run for your life during winter or on the Sabbath. Because on the Sabbath day, everything stops. Like on the Sabbath day, basically, generally, the, the, the strict Jews they will not do anything. They won't start their car. They won't drive the car. They only walk on the Sabbath. Now imagine if you have to run for your life on the Sabbath. Everything is shut down. They're strict Jews. They, even in hotels, they will not come to work. You are on your own. <laughs> Food and all, you will take care. You know, they're still very strict. That means on the Sabbath day, you don't do any work. 6 p.m. Friday, 
till um, Saturday 6 p.m. No work, Sabbath. So he says, on that sab on that time, don't if you have to run for your life, where you will go? Right? And winter is called. So you know, just pray that you don't have to run for your life during these times. By verse 21, uh, there will be great tribulation, such has not been since the beginning of the world. So verse 21. The kind of trouble you will see here is going to be so great. And you know, Daniel calls it the time of Jacob's trouble. I think it's in Daniel 12. Um, let me see. Yeah, verse 1. Daniel 12, 1. And his Daniel is saying. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. Daniel 12, 1. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. So Daniel 12, 1. This is referred to as a time of Jacob's trouble, meaning, there he, and so Gabriel already told Daniel, Daniel 12, 1. Jesus saying again here in uh, uh, Matthew 24 and verse uh, 21, there will be such trouble, no other nation has seen it like this. You know, so much. And this is all going to be because the Antichrist is going to go against Israel. Who's the Antichrist? He's going to be a political leader, he's going to be a man empowered by the devil. Who came as a man of peace for seven years. In the middle of the seven years, he's going to break the treaty and he's going to go against Israel. Starting by desecrating the temple, he'll set himself as God, he'll do all kinds of things. Yeah. And he's going to attack the people of Israel. And Jesus said, Daniel, Daniel said, Jesus said, there'll be trouble like you've never seen before. No other nation has seen this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, he'll be, uh, when I say politically, I, I don't know whether he'll be a president or prime minister or whatever, but he'll be a man who comes into power. Because uh, Daniel Sha Daniel ex uh, explains this. Um, he talks about, uh, uh, you know, so he talks about there'll be 10 leaders in what was the former European Union, uh, former Roman Empire, former Roman Empire, there'll be 10 leaders. And from one, Daniel chapter 8, he says, from one of the four regions which the Greek Empire was broken into, so the Greek Empire under, under Alexander the Great was broken into four parts. So big areas like Greek, Greece, uh, Turkey, the whole region around Syria, and then Northern Africa. From one of these parts, a little horn will rise. Little horn means little leader. Now, three, three out of the ten leaders, the ten horns, the ten leaders from uh, the former Roman Empire, three of them, this little horn will influence them, three of them, and they will push him up. You know, so this little horn, this little leader who comes, he comes from one of these four areas, one, any one of these four areas, he comes as a leader, and these ten leaders, uh, who are part of the former Roman Empire will support him and they will push him into prominence. So Daniel uses the word horns. Horn is talking about leaders, you know, like what we would say is in Bible times they called them kings, but in our day we look at them as political leaders, you know, people of influence, presidents, and so on. And so this little horn will then begin to speak pompous things against God. He's the Antichrist. He'll be supported by 10 of these leaders uh, who emerge in the former Roman Empire, which is mostly, mostly part of the European Union today. They will support him. So that's how he comes into power. Okay. Anyway, uh, we, will, we will look at those things in detail in, uh, in the third year. Um, so, so there's going to be a tribulation, verse 23. Again, in the middle of the tribulation, 
there are going to be people who are going to be false Christs and false prophets. And they're going to show signs and wonders. Now, even the Apostle Paul said, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he said, Satan will come with lying signs and wonders. And we see that during the second half of the tribulation, God himself, this is Revelation chapter 11, God himself will put two prophets on the earth who will show great signs and wonders. Now, we know one of them will be Elijah. Because Malachi 4, God said, I behold, I will send Elijah the prophet. He said, I will send Elijah. So Elijah will come back. Elijah did not die physically. He'll come back. There's one more prophet. Two of them will be here. It means they will be on the earth uh, in Jerusalem. And they will do great signs and wonders. But there will also be a lot of other false prophets. False prophets, false Christ. During this time, trying to uh, deceive the people. And there will be one main false prophet. Revelation 13 talks about him. Uh, he will be hand in hand with the Antichrist. And he will make people worship the image of the beast. He also will be doing signs and wonders. Okay. So, Jesus is warning, be careful. There will be many false Christs, many false prophets. They will deceive many. And he says, if possible, even the elect. Verse 24. That means even the believers... Now, the elect here in the context is the, the Jews. Now, many Jews will also turn to Christ. Um, even they could be deceived by these false prophets and false Christs. So be very careful. Right? And then there will even be people who are pretending that that is Jesus. So, so no, Jesus has come. He's there. Go there. Jesus has come. He's there. Go there. Then Jesus says, don't get fooled. Because he says, where the carcass is, that's where the eagles will gather. That means what he's saying is, if Jesus really comes, all the believers will be gathered to him. So that means that is how he will come. Right? So you just have to see where people are being gathered. Right? And then he begins to say, verse 20, 29. Uh, there will be all these signs happening in the heavens and uh, you know uh, uh, atmosphere and so on. Stars will fall and sing. Then the Son of Man will appear. And when the Son of Man appears, every the believers will be gathered together to Him. That means don't get fooled if somebody says, "Oh, the Son Jesus is there," or "Jesus is there," because when Jesus comes, everybody will be gathered to Him. He will send his angels and they will gather all his people from the four corners of the earth. So that is the that is the proof that that is the real Jesus. The angels will gather all the elect to him. Where the, so he's giving a picture like, you know, where the carcasses, the angels will be there and the, the, the eagles will be there. Where the son of man is, Angels will gather all his people to him. So you don't worry. Oh, I have to go. So Jesus, come. I have to book my flight and go there. No, no, you don't worry. Angels will take you there. If the Son of Man really comes, angels will take you to him. Okay. So don't get fooled when people say, the Christ has come here, Christ has come there. No, don't worry. Because if the Son of Man comes, he will bring you to himself. And the angels will gather you to himself. Okay. But he will come at the end. He says here, verse 30, Then the Son, son of Man will appear. Right? This is after the tribulation. You know, after all these things that happen, after all that, the Son of Man. This is Revelation 19. 
right? When Jesus is coming in the clouds of glory, those of us who have gone to be with him, we will come with him. Those of us who are alive on the earth will be gathered together to him. And he is going to execute vengeance on those who do not know God. And he's, by the word of his mouth, uh, he will destroy them. Right? Zechariah chapter 14, it says that, it's very sad to read it, but it says the flesh will just dry up on their body, that it just disappear. Just by the word of his mouth. Revelation 16, it says blood will flow uh, as, as high as the horse's uh, hoof, about five, uh, five feet high for about 230 miles, blood will flow like that at the battle of Armageddon. So this is like the end of the tribulation battle. Now, this is not given all these details here, but we know all these details from Revelation. We know other passages. Okay. Now, he's giving us exhortation. Okay. In view of what I have said, how do you live? How, what are some things you have to think about, right? So that is verses 32 to 51. Let's read that, and then we will cover that. Two verses each, please. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that is that it is near at the doors. Was that assuredly I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of the day and hour, no one knows not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the day of the Son of Man be. For us in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and other left. Two women will be grinding in the mill, one will be taken and other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Mm. Verse 48, 45, sorry. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household? to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Verse 47, Assuredly I say to you, that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming. Okay, you can read all three verses. And begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with, with the high uh, hypocrites. hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, thank you. All right. So verses 32 to 51, Jesus said, okay, I've told you, given you all these signs. Now, how should you, what should you be doing? Right. The main essence of verses 32 to 51 is watch and be ready. Hmm? The essence of it is be watchful, live ready. Right. 
That's the essence of what he is saying. So let's just kind of get into some of the details. The first thing, so he says in verse 32, he says, see, uh, you know, you look at the fig tree, the parable or the illustration of the fig tree. Right? Uh, when the fig tree starts blooming, putting out the leaves, then you know season is coming, summer. Right? So in the same way, when you're seeing all these signs happen, know that the time is near. Sun, time of my return is near. That's what he's saying. Right? Fig tree. Just like how you see the fig tree, you know, okay, season is changing. Right? So in, here in Bangalore, sometimes we see some flowers, some trees will start bearing certain kinds of flowers. Oh, okay, now it is changing. It's becoming... So like that. So you know that time is changing, season is changing. It's time is near. But he says one very important thing. He says, I'm telling you, everything will be fulfilled. From the time you see this, it will all happen in one generation. Okay, one generation. I mean, it's the people who see this, will they see the whole thing happen. Okay, so one generation, again, now there's a lot of question, how, how many years is a generation? Uh, The way, uh, I mean, if you go from Bible, generally it's 40 years, you know, 40 years. Thing. So if you go according to how the way be, the way things are happening in the world, uh, meaning for how sociologists are looking at things, today they look at it in blocks of 15 years. Right? Example, they say there, there was the baby boomers, the Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, Gen Alpha, Gen Beta, every 15 years, they see, this is sociology, I'm not saying Bible, but sociologists, people are studying, you know, pe people. They say every 15 years, there's a change in the way people are living. So that is according to sociology. According to Bible, uh, every 40 years, generally. So some things, so we don't exactly you know, how many years that will be. Uh, but Jesus said, in one generation, the generation that starts seeing all of these things happen in a, you know, uh, in, in that one generation will see everything fulfilled. It's going to happen so fast. Okay. Now, um, some um, Bible teachers, scholars, who especially talk about the end times, they use what Jesus mentioned here from the fig, learn this parable from the fig tree. And they kind of take it one step and say, okay, the fig tree represents Israel. You know, remember Jesus didn't say it, they're just kind of stretching it, like, you know, saying, okay, fig tree represents Israel. When the fig tree blossoms, begins to put out its leaves, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's taking, showing signs of life. Uh, so they say, okay, from the time Israel became a nation, which was 1948, or some people say, from the time Israel recaptured Jerusalem, which is 1967, from the generation that saw that, within that generation, everything will be full. Some people say it like that. But, um, you know, when you read these verses, Jesus is not necessarily saying the fig tree is representing Israel. He's not specifically saying that. He's just saying, see, you know how to know that there's a change in season by looking what happens to the fig tree. So that's the illustration he's using. Some people extended to say that, okay, the fig tree represents Israel from the time Israel came into its power on that generation, we'll see, and so on. Um, so uh, what I do agree with in, in that, in that uh, understanding is, yeah, Israel becoming a nation is a very important step towards fulfilling all the other prophecies because... Only then the temple can be rebuilt. Correct. Only if they go back to their own land, the people are there, and the people take possession of Jerusalem, only then they can actually rebuild the temple. So it is very logical, right? It's very logical. And so 
1948 is a very important part. People went back, they got it as a nation. 1967 is important because they recaptured Jerusalem. So that is also very important, right? It is all moving in the right direction to seeing the prophecies fulfilled. Okay. Today, Jewish people are there, they own the land, they have control over East Jerusalem. West side is still given to the Arabs because they had to have peace. On the other side is Jordan, uh, this side is Israel, and then there's Palestinians. Are there. So there's a lot of trouble going on, but at least they have control over East Jerusalem. So uh, things are fine. Things are ready in the sense that if they, I don't know how it's going to happen, but they can go in and rebuild a temple on that temple mount. You know how they, most likely the Antichrist will be able to broker peace. You know he'll come as a man of peace, and he's going to say, "Okay, I'm going to get permission for the temple to be rebuilt." If he gives them permission, they will rebuild it up in very fast, maybe a few months. Temple will be there because they've got everything ready. So most likely, the way this man is able to come into a place of prominence is he's the only man who would be able to make peace between Jews and Arabs to the point where the temple can be rebuilt. Right? Now people are trying to keep them from fighting. Right? That is Even trying to do that is very difficult. Right? But this man comes as a man of peace. It says he will sign a covenant of peace for seven years. Right? He'll sign. So he'll be able to do it. So that is how he will come on the scene. So anyway, so that was this this fig tree. Okay. To some extent, yeah, that you know, that fig tree, if you want to say it represents Israel. Uh, but is that exactly what Jesus said? No. If you want to extend it a little bit, fine. But definitely it's important that Israel came back to its own land. They got took control of Jerusalem. All those things are very important. The verse 36 to 51, another in interesting thing that Jesus says is, he says, hey, as in the days of Noah, so will it be. Right? So there are two parts to this. One is, he's talking about the way people were living in Noah's time. They didn't, basically, if you want to summarize it, they didn't care about God. They were, you know, busy marrying. and So you can imagine Noah was preaching. You know, God told him, Noah, you build the ark, and I'm going to send a flood on the earth. Now, till that time, they'd never seen a flood. So you can imagine, Noah's building the ark. He's a preacher of righteousness. He's preaching to the people. Nobody's listening to him. They're not going with their own life. He's saying, hey, blood is coming. Nobody's listening. He's building the ark. Why are you building? Blood is coming. Nobody's listening. So that is the first thing. So he says, it's going to be like that just before the end times. Mm -hmm. Nobody will pay attention to the preaching of righteousness. You know, the preaching of, what is this? Who said the great tribulation, antichrist? What do you say? Rapture, church. Oh, what do you say? No, no, no. So they'll be busy with their own things, yeah, marrying, giving in marriage, enjoying, etc. So that's the first part. And the second thing he says is just as the people uh, until the day that Noah entered the ark. I think this is a great picture of God taking the church out of the way before the judgment is poured out on the earth. And we will see this, you know, uh, in one of the upcoming chapters, we will say, why do we say that the rapture of the church will take place before the tribulation? Because Jesus used the typology of Noah. What happened in Noah's time? The righteous people were taken into the ark. Then the judgment was poured out on the unrighteous people who never listened. Then it was over. Then they came back. So the ark is a type. I mean, I would say like a picture here of God taking the church out of the way. Right? Because they entered. He says, as like, just like Noah's time. Oops. Yeah. 
just like Noah's time. And this will be first, nobody is paying any attention, they're all doing their own thing. Second, when it came, God took the righteous out of the way, went into the ark, judgment was poured out. They were kept in a place of safety. Then, uh, judgment is over, then they were released back onto the land. Okay, so the typology of Noah is one, you know, how Jesus used it is one example of one, one, one of the many reasons. And there are the other stronger reasons we'll see. So, and then he says, until the flood came, and then everything is over. At that time, you know, the, 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 the whole thing will be so sudden. You know, two people will be together, one will take, one will be left. You know, those things will come. The coming of the Son of Man, the angels will go and they'll gather people to Jesus, the elect, those who believed in him. They will gather them to him. Right? So the essence is he's saying, okay, see, you don't know when this is going to happen. You just do what you're supposed to do and be ready. So it's like the example of uh, a person who's given charge of the house. Right? So you're charge of the house, two things. There's, he uses the picture of a thief. He uses the picture of the master of the house. So you're given charge of the house. You don't know when thief is coming. So you always be alert. Second, the master has put you in charge of the house. Master is gone. You don't know when he's coming back. So just keep doing your work. Take care of everything that is inside the house. So that any time he comes, you will be ready. So you must be watchful, be ready. That's the way we are supposed to live. Matthew 24, understood? Okay. So to summarize, you can look at it in three parts. First part is uh, signs before the tribulation. Second part is what is happening during the tribulation. Third part is exhortation. You know, how to live in the end times. Live ready, look, be watchful, be ready. Francis. Uh, Pastor, in the time of tribulation, like the trouble for Israel, uh, so it's like Antichrist is killing Israelites or... Yeah, yeah. So there will be trouble all over the world. Okay. The, so the, the, the tribulation affects everyone, but very specifically for the Jewish people. It will be much more. Okay. There will be martyrs all over the world. Everyone who believes in Jesus will suffer, but especially those from Israel. Revelation 12 ends with the fact that there will be many who will be martyred in Israel, in Jewish people. Revelation 13, all over the world. Anyone who does not receive the mark of the beast will be killed. So you can say, imagine Bang Bangalore, you know, uh, I don't know how the, how the, I mean, the, the influence is, but the thing is, you cannot buy or sell unless you receive the mark of the beast. Now, many people, without, they won't know. Uh, they'll sign up. No, it's okay, fine. But for believers, people who say, hey, no, no, Bible says, do not receive the mark of the beast. The Bible also says, uh, Revelation 14, there'll be four angels who are going around bringing a message saying, you know, one will be preaching the everlasting gospel. Another angel will say, do not receive the mark of the beast. The message is, do not receive the mark of the beast. So God is giving warning. There'll also be the two witnesses, uh, the prophets preaching. There'll be 144,000 Jews preaching. So a lot of the people are telling, don't receive the mark of the beast. But there's a problem. If you refuse the mark of the beast, you can't buy your self. And you will also be killed. So during the tribulation, many people will be killed for their faith in Jesus, for refusing to receive the mark of the beast, and so on. But Revelation 20 says all those who were killed during the tribulation for the Lord Jesus, they will be raised up. They'll be resurrected. End of the tribulation, they'll be resurrected.
Okay. Any other questions? Question uh, from previous class. Yes. Last class, like uh, we uh, like we discussed that like uh, when tribulation comes, some believers go up and some believers will be here on earth. Uh, you are talking about the rapture of the rapture. church. Rapture of the In church. the rapture of the church, all believers who are alive will be caught up. Yes, at that time. But as soon as the rapture happens, many people will become believers. <laughs> Correct. After it happens, I think next one, two days, there will be lots of salvations. <laughs> because... So, Pastor, rapture will be visible to the other persons who are... They won't see the Lord. They won't see the Lord. Mm -hmm. right? Because He's coming in the air. And we are going to meet Him in the air. So, we going up in the air will be visible to the people. Yeah. I mean, it'll happen in the twinkling of a night. So, before they can bat it, you'll be there. Because the says, you'll be there. It'll happen like that. But you will be, you and I will be missing. Can you imagine? No, all over the world, if bodies are deep believers are re just disappearing, it will be chaos. You're driving the car, you're gone. Your car is going. <laughs> Think of all these things will happen. You know, uh, airplanes will fall from the sky. So many things will happen. What happened? Then only thing people can say is rapture happened. Because every person who's gone is a believer in Jesus Christ. And so many people are going to, you know, people who are hearing the gospel now, but they're not receiving. Immediately after that, they're going to believe. They'll believe. But they're left behind. They are on the earth. They have to go through tribulation. Uh, they're outside the ark, you know. Uh, that was, and uh, many of them will be martyred because you see this in the book of Revelation you know, chapter 6, chapter 8, chapter 12, chapter 13. So many people will be dying, dying, dying. They're being you're seeing them up in heaven coming. Also, is there any uh, during this tribulation time, even if people want to die, they can't die. Like, death won't be there. Yeah, yeah, it's the revelation. I mean, uh, uh, meaning people want to die, but they won't die. I think it's Revelation, uh, I think 8. Let me just give you the exact verse. We can read it. Um, they'll, they will cry to the mountains, fall on us. Hmm? Um, let me see uh, which chapter it is. Mm. I don't remember this uh, offhand, but it's there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that is that during the tribulation. Um, just that um, they will be so affected yeah um so this is this revelation 7 oh revelation 6 uh, um revelation 6 12 to 17 it says you know the, uh, the all these things are happening revelation 6 12 to 17 and uh, yeah, the kings of the earth, rich men, mighty men, they hide themselves in the cave and they're telling to the mountains, fall on us. I mean, they want to die. You know, um, then I think there's some, something more as well, right? And uh, uh, verse, Revelation 9, verse 6, Revelation 9, 6. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. Meaning, you know, the, 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 the pain is going to be so much, they want to die. 
but uh, still, you know, it's like it's they can't. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, they, they so they may, let's say they, they don't take that step of committing suicide yet, but they want to die because of the the torment that is going on. Mm. Yeah. When rapture comes, like, it's like the tombs will be opened and people will be resurrected. Yes. So what sense it was like actually quoted like like when 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 we are discussing the other day after the class like uh, if if a believer married to a gender i mean hindu person and she has faith on jesus but she couldn't go to church or something but she had faith on jesus and she lived a very holy life and she died so what happens is according to the hindu culture they'll burn the body hmm. there won't be any tomb or anything. right right so when Jesus come, what will happen to these people who are burned, who are, who the bodies are burned? Yeah. See, um, so how we are, how what happens to our body after we, uh, when, a, when a believer dies, what happens to the body doesn't matter, right? Some believers have died in the sea. Sharks have eaten their body already, you know. Some believers have died uh, somewhere in the plane crash or something, mountain, we don't know where the body is, body is burnt. So believers have died all over the world, and their bodies are gone, right? So it really doesn't matter what has happened. The fact is that at the time of the rapture, their spirit will come and God will give them a glorified body. So it's not dependent on anything on the natural. The fact is natural is gone already. Whether they put you in a ground, tomb, it's already gone, it de decayed. It's already become dust, or whether it was burnt or died in the ocean or mountain top, wherever. Our bodies all gone, but God will give these spirits glorified bodies. So every believer, regardless of how they died physically, where the body doesn't matter. So actually nowadays, uh, whether you put in the tomb or not doesn't matter, you know, because God will give them glorified bodies. Yeah, it's figurative because it's you know basically the bodies come arise, you know, but it's God who's giving them the glorified bodies. What actually it mentioned like when Jesus arise, like on the third day, the tombs are open, there is an hours. Yeah. So over there. Uh, okay, 11.50, there's also one question on the chat. Chai has asked us, how, will, how we will know about Mark of the Beast? Okay, so we'll take these two questions up next week. Mark of the Beast, how will we know it? Uh, and we will come to it, Chaya, in uh, Revelation 13. We will discuss it, but I will definitely answer it next week. Also, we will answer, what was the question? Or what happened when Jesus rose, when the tombs were opened, right? Yeah. So we'll answer both these questions next week. Hmm? Okay. All right, let's just cl close in prayer. Um, anyone can just pray and we'll quickly close. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all the class, oh Lord. Thank you for teaching so many things, oh Lord. Thank you for Pastor Ashish, oh Lord. Lord, help us to learn everything in deeper way and have to understand and use for your glory and live for your glory, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We'll uh, see you next week. Bye.